Welcome back to part 3 of episode 19 of 4D. Def's Daily Dose of Dota. I'm your host, Michael, Def is Plumley, and today we've been focusing on the offlane role of a clockwork played by Tongfu UUU9. But he's done a great job. It's uh, it's about 38 minutes into the game, and he has some great help from a Zeus carry and a Slark carry, doing a lot of work, but we've seen an exceptional job on his part, not dying, big part of being in the off lane, but also he's used his levels well, getting close to level 16, which is on the same level as his carries, and using the hookshot to great effect, initiating several fights, uh, killing our Lycan of DK several times with the help of a battery assault into hookshot, into cogs, into just teamwork from his allies porting in to kill the remaining sliver of HP on Lycan. We've seen the other allies of DK's Lycan fall even quicker. Three intelligence heroes and a Marana. Very squishy for the magical heavy lineup of Tongfu. We're going to hop back into the game and see the fruition of an offlane clockwork. Let's hop back into the game. When we left off, the first tier 3 high ground had been breached. And DK, looking for a Hail Mary. They're gonna smoke. Moonlight Shadow is still on cooldown, just trying to get a kill on anyone. Hoping to run into someone. Skyrath Mage, smartly staying back. He will scout out. And blink away. A generally wasted smoke, you may say, but DK, they're in a long shot at this point. You see the net worth. Skywrath is above both the Marana Shadow Demon combo supports of DK. And with the Slark, first position has a Skull Basher. He has an Eye of Scotty. The Zeus right behind him with his old stick, 640 damage dealing to everyone. And we see just how effective that can be. That's half of Batrider's health. It's over half of Marana's. And it's over half of Shadow Demon's. Lycan, the only one here with a reasonable health pool. He has his work cut out for him. As Tong Fu Illusion. continue to rotate through the jungle, they have their reign over the map. Rocket Flare has done a great job this game of scouting out lane transitions, scouting out Roshan several times. Scouting out Marana that time. And the hook shot not even needed as Zeus secures the kill. And DK forced back again. Zeus is getting too much to handle for this DK lineup. Perhaps this should have been a game on mid lane Zeus, as he is putting on a clinic. 350 damage, 145 damage, 640 damage. So easily, the entire HP of these intelligence heroes can be pumped out in a matter of two seconds. And we see Clockwork very close to that level 16. Rock it on. We see the long range of that hook shot. And you also see an Aghanim Scepter being built. Now hitting that level 16 in a very long range. We see it extending all the way up into the top lane Incoming. while residing firmly in the jungle. But now just using his battery assault, it does significant damage to farm up the jungle. He already has three pieces of his Naganum Scepter, 400 gold away. He would love to get that online for the next set of fights. And he may get there, with Rocket Flare almost netting him another 100 gold. Instead, he'll wait for the rune. Speaking of gold, a bounty rune coming his way. And he's wondering how to get the last oh, bit of money to complete the Aghanim Scepter. Scouting into the jungle, wondering if there's a rotation coming from TK. But Tongfu 
just have the run of this game. 1100 gold now. Also bottling the bottom rune. I have no idea what Marana is doing down here. That's very ambitious of her. Not sure why she's down there. So at the 38 minute mark, with DK turtling in their base, Tong Fu rightly looked to put the boot to the throat of DK with a Roshan. Basher's online. I have Scotty, so Slark will be dealt very little damage. And an Aghanim Scepter now online for Clockwork. Do it with flair. Probably his Roshan centerpiece item to, to work towards. The four staff great at getting you out of a power cog, but the change here. Going from 50 f or 40 seconds down to 12 seconds. Coming in. Cutting it by almost 75%. And an Abyssal Blade now coming out for Slark. He is big. You can see him on the net worth chart. I'm not sure DK will be able to stop this game from falling into Tong Fu's hands. Our heroes grouping up into the jungle. Rock it on. Looking at the last hits, we see. UUU9, middle of the pack, but at least uh, 30 or so of those were in the laning phase. He did a great job. Only having to face up against the like and almost coming close to kill him in the laning phase. Top tower is under attack. As we see Zeus, Arcane Boots, and Boots of Travel, he's able to do enough damage to just force back any kind of pushing that Lycan would have hoped to get. He has his BKB, a plate mail, but it may be a little, too little too late. As another rocket flare comes out. Just peppering the wave, slowing their progress that he would have hoped to make with a split push. And with a haste rune, Incoming. Clockwork has the run of the map. Slark now has his Abyssal Blade and Aegis of the Immortal. And it may be time for a fight. Death Prophet does have a Sheba's Guard online, but I have a feeling DK are just going to disintegrate when the final fight comes. Zeus disassembling those boots. 1300 gold. He could have a refresher in a few minutes. But it looks like the fight will be coming. As we see Abyssal Blade coming out onto the Lycan. Clockwork shooting in. And Marana ult instantly having to come out. As Tong Fu group up bottom lane. This is just going to be too much, I feel. They have excellent... Excellent vision here. As Marana attempts to push out a lane by herself. Dyer's bottom tower is under but the attack. fight is occurring. Even without DK. Tong Fu can just tear in to that tier 3. Marana surely will have to port back to base soon. Players here. And Clockwork just waiting for that hook shot. You can see the insane range. He can sit at a very safe vicinity behind all four of his allies. And it's off! For the end of this, we're just going to focus on Clockwork's perspective. Radiance top tower is under attack. As we see him move in, the gem coming out, and just too much damage coming out from the Zeus. Three thousand damage hitting everyone. Radiance and this tier 3 tower may be attack. forfeit. And what do you know? Hookshot back off of cooldown. They've landed it. And the GG's are coming out. Even after only the first lane of Rax, but the Zeus, too much to handle. A Slark, very well farmed. And that will be a victory for Tong Fu and the offlane Clockwork. Well, that's going to conclude this episode of 4D Death's Daily Dose of Dota.
Today we've been focusing on the offlane clockwork by Tong Fu UUU9's exceptional play. Great job staying alive in the offlane. What more can you ask for? While Slark has his way in the easy lane farming up, Zeus doing a great job, even though he died a few times because of the two dedicated supports who were not harassing Clockwork, chose to dive him several times. Clockwork was able to get good farm, as well as denying farm from Lycan. And then we saw a couple good hook shots early on when the cooldown is more than a minute, helping to go in on the Death Prophet mid, helping to get some early gold, some early tier 1 towers, and they just carried that into the mid game. Later on in the mid game, we saw the four staff come online as Clockwork was able to stay competitive with the levels and just round out all of his spells. Battery Assault, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, rank 4, 1200 damage. And even without the Zeus accompanying that kind of damage, the intelligence supports could not stand for DK. The late game, which you just watched, a bit of a stomp fest. Zeus, 640 damage, as you saw. The Slark had an Abyssal Blade. And DK, we're just too far behind to come back, even though BKBs were starting to come online. Well, that's going to be it for this episode of Death's Daily Dose of Dota. Let me know what you thought about the episode. Leave a comment on the YouTube video. My username, Def Broadcasting, D-E-F Broadcasting. Also, let me know what you think about the show in general, what heroes you'd like to see in the future me focus on, or what pro players you'd like to see me focus on. I have a Twitter. My Twitter handle is also Def Broadcasting, DEF Broadcasting. From all of us here at Deficit Broadcasting, helping you raise your score. Till next time.